Hi everyone, welcome back to the Syntax Byte. It is Ryan, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a map in Excel using Canadian postal codes. So this appears to be a commonly Googled issue. Uh, so I set out to find a solution, and I think I found something that should work for most people um, while working within the confines of Excel. So basically, this will work if you have Excel 2016 or newer. So hopefully, that is most people watching. This video, of course, if you have Office 365, you are covered. Um, or if you have just the Excel 2016, or I believe they have a 2019 pack as well, you should be covered to use that. So unfortunately, if you're on Excel 2010 or 2013, you'll need to look elsewhere because the map feature wasn't available yet. But if you create a map using Canadian postal codes, what you might get is you might get something that looks like this, which probably isn't quite what you expected. Uh, it's not actually divvied up quite right by the postal code. Uh, you could say I have well, a little over 10 things selected here and one, two, three, four, five, maybe six or seven areas um, here and the, the areas might not even seem to be accurate. The other thing you might run into that I did for sure while I was playing around with this was map charts need geographical data such as country, region, state, province, county, or postal code. Check your data and try again. So. Um, <clears throat> that might be another issue and yet another issue you might have is that you can't even tell because it's just displaying uh, the province. So these are Calgary postal codes. Uh, you might have it displaying something like, um, when the map comes up, it displays something like this and it's, it's pretty much useless. Um, so I'm going to show you how to fix all those problems in this video. So the first thing to be aware of is that unfortunately in Excel, uh, unlike where you can plot American zip codes right down to the zip code. Unfortunately for Canadian postal codes, it doesn't seem to work like that. There is a workaround and that's using the forward sortation area. Basically we're going to use the first three uh, characters of the postal code and just ignore the rest. Um, so if you have data that's actually divvied up by postal code itself, then we'll need to adjust the data. <clears throat> I'm going to leave that largely up to you. Uh, to determine how to do, but I'll show you uh, a couple tricks for it here. Um, basically, forward sortation area, first three letters of the postal code, this is something that Statistics Canada uses as well to send a lot of their data. They don't actually go as granular as the individual postal code. They just do a forward sortation area. Why that is, I'm not really sure, but postal codes can be quite a small number of um, uh, buildings or, or locations, so perhaps it's mostly just as a privacy thing, not, not too sure. But one of the first things you want to do is you want to give your thing some, some headings. So I'm going to give it a postal code heading, and then this, I'm just going to call this my score. These are just randomly generated numbers I assigned to a list of postal codes. Hopefully you have real data that you're working with, but this will work to get an idea of how this goes down. So from here, what we want to do is we want to convert all our postal codes to forward sortation areas. So what you can do is over here, I can do right, uh, or sorry, we're going to do left, and then say text, and then do three. So that will give us the first three characters on the left. We'll just double click to drop that down. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to go over to paste and I'm going to do a paste values and that will wipe those all out okay so I'm just going to delete this map it was unsuccessful so by adding the postal code um, heading that should get rid of this this message here um, where it doesn't really know what it's working with if you got that message in the first place. Now, if you still get this message or it says it has issues plotting things or things just aren't looking like you want, you could add another column to, to the left of this called province or, or country, and that might help it further further do, uh, figure out what it is. Now, given that this is a forward sortation area and not a full postal code, I haven't had any issues just putting postal code as the label, so um, that's fine. I'm just gonna call this score. And yeah, so this this is okay. Um, in fact, we could probably just plot this, and I'm not too sure what it would do with the duplicate values, uh, but you might want to just eliminate them. So in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to do a remove duplicates based on this, and this is going to leave me with one of the scores for the layout. Now, in most real-world cases, obviously, you'd want to aggregate the data, in which case... Uh, 
you know, you could do something like a sum if or an average if based on uh, this and then, um, you know, remove this column, then you would have the same for, for all of these and then uh, you'd be able to do a remove duplicates. But in this case, since I don't really care, I'm just going to remove the duplicates without doing something to sort of aggregate the data in any way, shape or form. Uh, but if you wanted to use the average, the total, etc., I'd recommend going ahead and doing that. So now we can do a remove duplicates and I'm going to remove duplicates simply based on the postal code. It tells me that 72 duplicate values were found and removed, 30 unique values remain. So we're going to go OK. And now if we do it like this, we should actually get something that looks pretty reasonable as long as we adjust the map appropriately. So I'm going to go ahead and do a filled map. And the first thing it gives me is that interesting. So it tells me only 77% of the locations were plotted with high confidence. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I wasn't actually getting that area error earlier using other data, but again, you can add more fields to, to hopefully fix that. But what it first pops up is the province of Alberta, which is correct. These postal codes are all in the province of Alberta. However, um, this map's pretty useless because we can't really see it at the at the level of detail we need. So to change the level of detail, you go over to hit this drop down area on chart options. And you go to series and then it's whatever your series name is, so minus score. You go over to these three bars, go series options, and you can select the map area. So we can do state province. We could do only regions with data. And then there we get all of our forward rotation areas plotted. Um, this isn't full forward rotation areas for Calgary necessarily. So there are some areas missing, but we can see does a pretty good okay job at plotting them here now. So it's, it's, this is pretty satisfactory uh, for me. There's a few other options obviously you can play around with, changing the map projection for instance. Uh, it doesn't do too much for this map but just kind of changes it like a little bit. So automatic's probably fine there. You can add labels if you want. Um, so there's all our postal codes or our forward sortation areas. Uh, we could do show all but even if they don't quite fit so best fit only probably makes sense in that case and yeah that's pretty much about it guys um that's how you use canadian postal codes to create a map in excel uh, if you have any questions drop them down below uh, and i hope this solution was helpful for some of you all right i'll see you in the next video like comment and subscribe thanks for watching